Hello and welcome to our third week of Big Fish Live. Well, we hope you've had a fantastic week and we hope you've enjoyed some of the extra videos that we've been posting up over the Easter weekend. Um, well, what videos were we posting up, Beck? Um, we had Luke doing his uh, music video. Yes, Luke and his music video and a little cameo from Elisha on the guitar as well in that. Yeah. And um, we posted up a video of a little sort of paper tear thing that I did for our church as well. And we posted up some other great videos explaining all about Easter. So we hope you enjoyed those. If you missed them, check out our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see them there as well. Yes, Excellent. and as um, we normally start, we're going to start again with Animal Karate. So this week, Steve is going to be running Animal Karate and I am going to be the Animal Karate expert. Yep. We love this game and we think it just gives you a chance that if some people are a little bit late joining us, then it means that they don't miss out on any of the important bits that come later, but can just join in the game with us. Yes. So, oh, the three different options for animal karate are... A giraffe. Hey a penguin. Hey which you usually do down by your sides, but you won't be able to see if we do it like that. And number three, a crocodile. So, for those that haven't joined us before, um, so... Um, Steve is going to say, Animal Karate Kids, do your thing, and you're going to choose either a giraffe, a penguin, or a crocodile. Then I, as the Animal Karate Expert, am going to pick one of those things too. Obviously, I would normally be blindfolded, but I can't see you. So there's some honesty that's involved in this game as well. And then, um, if I'm doing the same action no, that you... me. I'm the expert this week. Are you? Yeah, that's what we just said. I'm the expert. Oh, yeah, okay. That's why you're explaining I... it. So if I do the same action as you, then you're out. You just need to sit yeah. down. You need to be a bit honest about that. But yes. otherwise, then you continue on into the next round and we'll see who will be the winner this week. And as we always say, if you're one of our winners, let us know. Message us on our Facebook page or any other method that you know to message us. Yes. And um, we'll give you a shout out as one of our winners this week. Okay. Well, clearly, uh, clearly our expert has won every week so far. We haven't sort of heard much, but we, no. we know that you've been enjoying it, which is good. Yes. So, yes. Okay, so you're ready to go for the first round. You're going to get us started. So I'm you're the expert. You've got to give the shout out. Ah, you? see. Becky's a little bit confused this week, obviously. No, I'm right. not confused. I'm just tired. Okay. So, Sorry, guys. Here we go. Here okay, we go. so, Animal Karate Kids, do your thing. Hiya. So, you can choose a giraffe, a crocodile, or a penguin. So, and if you have chosen, our animal karate expert is going to do his thing. So, Steve, off you go. Hi. That is a penguin. If you are doing a penguin, this is your point to sit down. Do not worry. You can join in again with next week's. Yes. So, but if you, ha if you have picked one of the other options, then you can keep playing. So, we're going to do round number two. So, animal karate kids, do your thing. Hi, yeah. So, giving you a chance to choose. Giving you a chance to choose. And now. Oh! And Steve has disappeared for Elisha to join us. Hey, Elisha! You going to say hello to everybody, buddy? There we go. So <laughs> can you hold Elisha? And yes. Then I can be the expert. Excellent there. Fantastic. Okay, so. Uh, so, I'm ready. So, they're, they're all set and ready. So it's my turn? Yes, it yes, is your so turn. Here we go. Hi! -ya! So that is a crocodile. <laughs> yeah. Snap, yeah. <laughs> snap, snap, snap. So yes, um, you have chosen a crocodile. So if you were a crocodile as well, then you need to sit down, be honest about it. But if you are still there, if you didn't choose the penguin in the first round or the crocodile in the second, you're still in for the final round to see if you're going to be one of our winners this week. So Okay, so Animal Karate Kids... Do your thing. Hi -ya. Hi -ya. So choose your one, whatever you're going to go for. Okay, so now it's my turn, isn't it? Yes. You're going to give us a call? Animal okay, card. so Animal Karate Expert, do your thing. Hi -ya. Crocodile. So I think snap, those snap, are some, <laughs> some snapping crocodiles we've got over there. Yeah. And. Yeah. So if you manage to have something different. 
<laughs> in that round as well, then that means you are a winner. Yay! Excellent. Well done, well done, well done. Excellent. Good job, good job, good job. So, as always, this week we've got lots of exciting things. We're going to do a song in a moment. We're going to do a great new story. We're introducing a new theme for that's going to run for our next couple of weeks as well. We're going to have Luke back and we're going to be doing some craft towards the end. So, Becky, as we're going to be doing some craft, if I pull up the picture, do you yes. want to explain to them just what they need for the craft this week? If you haven't seen the Facebook post, then Becky will explain just what you need to have so that you know and have got that ready for the end of our club. So, yes. what do they need? So, for, um, for our craft this week, you will need either a piece of string or a pipe cleaner, some colours, um, some green paper or some coloured paper or some white paper, depends what you've got, some penny pasta or some beads or something like that, some scissors and some sellotape. That is what you need for this week. Excellent there, excellent. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be doing our song. Now, we were hoping to introduce another new song to you this week, but unfortunately we had some technical issues during the week. And so we're going to go back to the song from our first week, which was our plan to do next week anyway. So this week, again, we're going to be singing a song that I'm sure you know really well. I'm sure you sang really well in the first week. But if you weren't here for us for the first week, don't worry. I'm sure you'll pick it up really quick. It's a song called Great Big God and talks about how amazing and incredible God is is so i'm going to start that up becky's going to do the actions so watch along sing along as best you can do the actions as best you can and just enjoy our god is a great big god our god is a great big god our god is a great big god and he holds us in his hand our god is a great big god our god is a great Hello. Hello, Luke. Welcome back this week at Big Fish Kids Club. Oh. Hello, Elisha. Excellent. You're going to say hello to everybody out there as well, Luke? 
Hello out there! Look, I told you before, you can speak normally. They're not in the camera, they're just, you can speak out there. Fine. I so, know, it's just funny. So, look, look, last week we were talking about Good Friday. Did you enjoy the story last week? Yeah, it was a really great story, Steve. Yeah, like you said, it should be a great Friday, shouldn't it? Yeah, not just a good Friday, but a great, incredible, amazing, outstanding Friday because Jesus died for us so that we could be part of his family forevermore. Oh, oh yeah. It's and, amazing, and, isn't it? And it was great fun on Sunday as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, because you and your band got to play and sing and you had a special guitarist as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Who wasn't me. Yeah. So wearing sunglasses. There we go. So so anyway, so so Luke, so this week we're yes. starting off a new theme. We're going to be looking at the different Ooh. names of Jesus in the Bible. Ooh, uh, what? The different names of Jesus in the Bible. But Steve, yes, Luke. his name was Jesus. Yes, his name was Jesus. Yeah. But you know, Luke, at different stories and at different points, no, Elisha, don't steal Luke's nose. Hey! <laughs> um, at different stories and different points, um, different people called him different things. Ah, oh, so, Steve? Yes. Is that like how you're called Steve? Yes. But to Elisha, you're daddy? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And you're annoying to Becky? Oi! Luke, <laughs> you can't say that kind of thing. <laughs> anyway, um, Luke, so yes, yeah, so so he's called lots of different names at lots of different points in the Bible, and so we're going to be having a look at that. Okay. Do, okay. So, sorry, sorry, Elisha is wandering around. He is wandering around, isn't he? He's trying yes. to sneak up behind you. But um, so Luke, do you want to know about our story this week? Uh, yes, please, Steve. Well, our story this week actually starts at the very, very beginning of the Bible, the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. Steve? Yes, Luke. But, but, Jesus wasn't in the Old Testament. He, he was in the, the New Testament. He wasn't born until the New Testament. Oh, Luke, Luke, yeah, yeah. The start of the New Testament records Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, but that was just when Jesus was born as a baby here on earth. Jesus existed right from the very beginning before the world was even created. Oh, yeah, because, because we said, didn't we? We said Jesus is God. That's right, yeah. So he's been around since the beginning. So we're going to look at the very, very beginning and look at the name that Jesus receives in that story. As so... Well. So, what what name is it this week, then, So, the Steve? name this week that we're going to be looking at is called Offspring. Why would you call him something that sounds like someone that's bouncing and fell off a trampoline? Oh, look, it's not about bouncing and falling off something, Mama. but Offspring means, like, a son or daughter. Mama. Someone's oh, okay. daughter. Okay. So, it's because, in this story, God the Father is going to talk about Jesus as God the Son and say about he how he was going to come and actually do what we were celebrating last week and come and die on the cross and rise again. So, Jesus was called God's son yeah. like Elisha's called your son. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so, Elisha is your offspring. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and Jesus was called God's offspring. That's right, yeah, that's exactly right. So, so Luke, uh, do you want to settle down in your bunk, have yes, a listen please. to this week's story, um, we'll get you back next week and see if you've understood no. a bit more about why it was so important that Jesus had to come as God's offspring to save each and every one of us. Oh, that sounds good. Okay. And maybe that means that Elisha can't steal my nose again. Yes, 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 you can keep your nose well hidden from Elisha. Okay, so do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Bye-bye! Bye-bye, Luke. Bye, Elisha. Okay, so get, settle down in your bunk and we'll sort of see how we go. So, as always, we're going to switch across to our story now and hopefully you're going to enjoy it just as much as we enjoyed telling it. And hopefully look out as well for where the mention of that name of Jesus is, the name Offspring. So, here's our story this week. So our story this week comes from the very beginning of the Bible. As we said, Luke, that might seem a bit strange when we're talking about Jesus during these next couple of weeks. But actually, as we said to Luke, Jesus was there in the very beginning. So, well, let's start at the beginning, because that's where our story begins today. At the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. You see, in the beginning there was, well... Nothing. That is nothing except for, well, 
this by here. Now if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, you know how this lettering works, but if you haven't, then just watch the yellow bits, because I'm going to paint some yellow letters with my magic black paintbrush. So at the beginning, as I said, there was nothing, well, except for... God. There was just God. But God wasn't lonely, because, it, you see, when we talk about God, it gets a little bit confusing, because we know there's only one God, but he comes in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. And so actually they were there together, and it was amazing and incredible because of the love they had for one another. But one day they decided to do something amazing and incredible. Something so fantastic, it rocked everything. You see, one day, God did this. God made everything. He made the plants and the animals. He made the birds. He made the sea, the land, the planets, the stars. He made absolutely everything. But he saved his best creation until last. You see, the thing he left till last was something different to everything else in his creation. It was something that was made in God's own image and had God's life breathed into it. You see, what God saved until last, his best creation of all, was actually, well, a man named Adam. And he placed Adam in his garden, to look after everything in his garden and be in charge of everything in his garden as well. And so then, God gave Adam a wonderful job. God, had, you see, had said to Adam that he wanted Adam to, well, do lots of things in his garden, to enjoy everything that God had made, to look at how incredible and fantastic it is. But God said, God, but I want you to do a job for me. I want you to name all of the animals. Now the Bible doesn't tell us exactly how that happened, but it might have been that God brought each and every animal before Adam, and Adam would have gone, um, elephant, uh, kangaroo, uh, rabbit. It might not have been like that, but that might have been how it was. But the Bible tells us that God asked Adam to name all of the animals. But as Adam was naming all of the animals, so Adam started to notice something. You see, he noticed that there was, well, a boy and a girl elephant, and there was a boy and a girl giraffe, and a boy and a girl zebra, and a boy and a girl kangaroo, and a boy and a girl bunny rabbit, and a boy and a girl, well, everything except for, well, Adam. He was the only person. And actually, Adam felt a little bit lonely. Even though he had God there with him in the garden, which was amazing and incredible, Adam really wanted, well, another person like him. So God decided to do something amazing. Now again, the Bible doesn't tell us, but maybe Adam hadn't ever, well, slept before. So God decided to put Adam to sleep. So maybe Adam was walking through the garden one day and went, Suddenly, I would have been, oh, I don't know what's going on for that, but I feel like I want to lie down. And he went to sleep. And whilst Adam was asleep, so then, well, God, he says, took one of his ribs and he made something amazing. You see, what God made was actually, well, another person. He actually made a person for Adam. And so Adam would then have woken up and he would have looked up and he would have seen there before him was Eve. And as his eyes started to adjust, he probably looked and he would have said, wow, man, which might be where we get the term woman from, I don't know. But that's the thing, he would have looked and said, oh, wow, man, this is incredible, this is fantastic, God has made a person just for me. And Adam was so excited, he took Eve right the way throughout the garden, showing her all the amazing things that God had said they could do, and all the amazing, incredible things that God had made. And as they were walking through the garden, suddenly Eve noticed the tree in the middle of the garden. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. And she said to Adam, she said, oh, 
What about that tree over there? That looks amazing. The fruit looks absolutely incredible. Oh, no, no, said Adam. Sorry, I forgot. There was only one thing that God said to not. God has just told us one thing, Adam said. He said, do not eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. That's the only thing that God has told us not to do. So you said, oh, that seems fair. You know, God has made this incredible world for us. And he's just asked us not to do one thing. That's fine. But anyway, we don't know how long later it was. But one day, Eve was wandering through the garden by herself. We don't know why she was by herself either. I don't know where Adam was, why he wasn't doing his job of looking after her as he should have done and being with her and caring for her, but he wasn't there. And as he was on her own, so along came a slippery, slimy snake. And the snake actually spoke to Eve, which the Bible doesn't seem to suggest was odd, so perhaps that's what happened back in those days. And the snake, though, was actually there trying to do something wrong. You see, there was never anything wrong in the garden before. Everybody did what God wanted them to do. But the snake came to him and he said, Is there anything that God has said you can't do? And he said, Well, God has said we're not allowed to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. And the snake said, But why? He said, God's told you not to eat the fruit because he knows that if you eat the fruit, you will be like God. Oh, said Eve, I could be like God? Oh, that would be amazing, that would be incredible. You see, after listening to the slippery, slimy snake, well, Eve suddenly felt a bit like this by here, a really big word, but a really important word. She felt, well, She felt she was thinking about doing something even though she knew it was wrong. She knew that she should listen to God. She knew that she shouldn't eat the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden, but she thought, oh, it does look nice. I do feel a bit tempted. Now, you know, the Bible doesn't say it's wrong to feel tempted, but it is wrong to give in to that temptation to do things that are wrong. And you know, actually, God has said that when we feel tempted, we should call out to him and ask for his help, and he'll help us. To stick to doing what's right and doing what he wants us to do. But you see, Eve, as she was thinking about what the slippery snake had said, she actually had something which I call, well, eye disease. Now, I don't mean these kind of eyes, but I mean this kind of eye. A great big letter I. You see, Eve was thinking, well, I know what God has said, but I want to do what I want to do. She didn't want to listen to what God had said. She wanted to do her own thing. And you know, we all sometimes get eye disease, don't we? We all sometimes sort of see something that perhaps one of our brothers or sisters have got, or brother or our friends in the playground, and we think, it's not fair that they've got that. Why can't I have that? I want it, and I want it now. And when we're like that, we're not very nice people, because we're thinking about ourselves rather than thinking about what God, who made and created us and loves us, wants us to do. Well, anyway... After listening to the slippery, slimy snake, Eve decided to wander across to the middle of the garden to have a look. She knew that she should have stayed well away from the tree in the middle of the garden, but, well, because she felt tempted, she decided to do it. And you know, that's a good thing for us as well, isn't it? When we feel tempted, we should just try and stay away from the thing that's making us feel tempted as much as we can, rather than giving it a chance to actually let us do something that's wrong. But Eve, she went and she had a look and she thought, well, perhaps if I just pull a bit of fruit down, then that'll be okay. And she grabbed a bit of the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. And then she went, <clears throat> she took a bite. And just at that moment, well, along came Adam. And um, Adam would have seen Eve taking a bite from the fruit and... He would have known that it was wrong, he would have known that it wasn't the right thing to do, but 
when she offered him some, well, he decided to take a bite too. And I wonder whether as soon as he took that bite, he started to feel there was something not right inside. He started to think, oh, oh I don't feel very good at all. It wasn't because of what he'd eaten, but it was because he knew that it was wrong. And you know, we get that feeling, don't we, as well? When we do things that we know are wrong, we sort of get a feeling inside that just reminds us that we know we shouldn't have done it. It wasn't the right thing to do. And that's probably just how Adam felt. Because you see, the problem is that when we have eye disease, when we're thinking about ourselves and what we want to do rather than what God wants, when we end up doing things that are against what God has told us to do, actually, the Bible says it causes a great big problem because it actually separates us from God. It creates a great big barrier between us and him and stops us from getting to know him, stops us from getting to be with him, stops us from being part of his family forevermore. It cuts us off from God. And that's just what happened to Adam and Eve. They'd always been with God in the garden. It had been amazing. It had been incredible. But suddenly they'd done something wrong and they knew there was going to be a problem. They knew there was a consequence to what they'd done. And so actually they tried to do something really rather silly. They tried to hide from God. Now, God is amazing. God is incredible. God is awesome. God is huge. God made everything. He knows everything. And so, well... You can't really hide from God. But they tried to do that. And God came into the garden and God already knew what they'd done. God knew where they were hiding. But God called out for them to come and see him. And I bet God was sad. Because this isn't what God wanted to happen. God knew it was going to happen, but it's not what he wanted. God wanted people to be with him forever. But you see, because they'd done something wrong, well... There had to be a punishment. There had to be a consequence. Because God is good and perfect and so can't let anything bad into his special place. And so actually, just like I said that we're cut off from God and separated from him. So well, that's what had to happen to Adam and Eve as well. You see, God said that actually they needed to leave his garden. They could no longer be in God's special place anymore. But you see, even when God was telling them what was going to happen, when he was telling them the punishment, the consequence for their actions, he also made an amazing promise. And that's where the name of Jesus comes in in our story this week. Because he said that his offspring, meaning Jesus, would come and actually would do something amazing. You see, God promised that Jesus was going to sort things out. You see, the Bible tells us that Jesus came down to earth and he lived a perfect life. He never did anything wrong. But then he was placed upon a cross. But as I said, he wasn't placed there for anything he'd done wrong because he'd never done anything wrong. But he was placed on that cross for all the wrong things that you and I have done. The wrong things that Adam and Eve have done. So that the Bible says anybody who turns and puts their trust in him, says they're sorry for the things they've done that are wrong and puts their trust in him completely, can be forgiven and one day get to be back with God in heaven forever, part of his family forevermore. God needed to make sure that no one could enter his garden anymore unless they were perfect. So when God sent Adam and Eve out of his garden, the Bible tells us that God put a great huge warrior angel there at the gates of his garden. And the Bible says that he hid it from our view so that we couldn't see it anymore. But the great big warrior angel had a flaming sword swinging from side to side to stop anybody from entering God's garden that shouldn't be there. It looked like a great big no entry sign forevermore. But remember, God had made a promise before he sent them out of the garden. You see, God had said, that he would do something incredible. You see, even though Adam and Eve had done wrong, even though we do wrong, the Bible tells us that God did this by him.
God made a way back. God made a way back into his special place for each and every one of us. By coming himself and dying upon a cross. Just like it was a tree in the middle of the garden that led to the problems for Adam and Eve. So it would be Jesus placed upon a tree, a cross made of wood that would sort out the problems and allow us to get back to God. If we were just willing to turn, say we're sorry to him, put our trust in him forevermore. Then he said that we won't just get to be able to come back into his garden, but actually we also get to become part of his family and live with him forever in his most incredible, amazing place. So that's our story this week. That even though Adam and Eve messed things up, even though everything went, seemed to go wrong, God still made a way back for us because he loves you and me so, so much. Well, I think this is a good time for us to pray. So if you've been with us in Big Fish Club, Kids Club before, you know that the way we pray is we don't just put our hands together and close our eyes, but we do a bit of a drill. So this is what you need to do. If you haven't been with us, I'll explain. You've got to put your hands on your shoulders like this. When I say one, you've got to put your hands out in front of you as quick as you possibly can with that. When I say two, you've got to cross your arms like this. When I say three, close your eyes, bow your heads, and then I'm going to pray. And after that, I'll say four, and we'll be sat up nice and straight, ready to go for the next bit of Kids Club this week. So you ready? Hands yourself. Here we go. One. You've got to be quicker than that. You have to be really, really quick. So you ready? Here we go. One thing I need to tell you. Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll tell you that afterwards. That's okay. Here we go. One. That's good. Two. God, I thank you that you love us so, so much. God, that you loved us so much that you made us in the first place. You created absolutely everything, including us. But then, God, I thank you that even though we mess up, even though we do things that are wrong, just like Adam and Eve, you don't just cast us out. But, God, you made a way back for us by coming to this earth, living a perfect life, and then dying on the cross for us. God, I pray you help us understand what we need to do. That we need to turn, say we're sorry to you. Turn away from what we've done wrong and put our trust in you. And if we do that, you have said that not only will you forgive us, but you will make a way back for us into your special place. And you will allow us to be part of your family forevermore, which is the most amazing and incredible thing ever. God, I pray you help us just to know exactly what that means and help us to turn and put our trust in you. In your name, God. Amen. Four. Sat up nice and straight, ready to go, because right now we're going to hand over to Becky, who is going to be doing some amazing craft with you this week. Hello. We've come back for craft, but before we do our craft, we are going to go through our memory verse so if steve can pull it up for me fantastic thank you our memory verse this week is everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved romans chapter 10 verse 13 and that is in the new testament so the second half of the bible in a book called romans in chapter 10 verse 13 so it's everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved saved we aren't able to put it on the craft this week um, because we are going to be making something that i'm going to show you now so the craft that we are making is going to be a snake so that's why i said we needed a pipe cleaner or a bit of string this is already cut if you're using string rather than a pipe cleaner you're probably going to want to put a knot in the end just to stop your beads or your um pasta or that kind of thing from falling off the end so you probably want to put a knot in the end and then so I've got penne pasta which is the tubes of pasta I've colored mine in as well so this one's like a red and I've got a green one I've colored them in lots of different colors if you've got multicolored pasta at home even better that you can use that kind of thing as well okay so what we're going to do we are going to feed our pasta onto our string or our pipe cleaner see if oh, I can do this mama. hey buddy so you put one on and two and Elisha 
has some paper there as well. He's also got a wooden pair of, well, some toy pliers that he likes playing with. So he's holding the paper with that at the moment. <laughs> so that's what Elisha is doing. Okay, so I've got two on here. You might want to, if you've got some sellotape, you might want to put some sellotape on the other end of the string just to make it a bit easier to thread it on. So I've got a green one and a red one. Oh, have you got some paper there, Elisha? And this one is a blue one. And a pink one in the middle. Okay. So, and don't forget as well, we have said before, but um, you can ask your grown-ups um, that when you've finished your craft, if it's okay with them, they can take a picture and send it through to our Facebook page. And we might even be able to show them next week. So, I'm going to put maybe one, maybe two more on here. I'll go from there. <laughs> okay. So, new one. Up. Okay. So, there we go. So, I have um, put all the bits of pasta onto my piece of string. I've made sure it's tied at the end so that they can't fall off either. Okay, so then the paper that I said that you would probably need, you could do it with tissue paper or you could do it with some colored paper, that kind of thing. So, but you won't need very much of it. So what I've done is on some of this piece of paper, on this piece of paper, what I've done is I've folded the paper in half a little bit because you don't need very much paper at all. So I folded it in half and then I've cut out a shape that looks a little bit like this so it makes it look ah oh yes it makes it look like the shape of a snake's head so it's kind of like a triangular kind of shape that kind of thing um what i have done as well i'm making sure that i leave the top bit on where the fold is so that the two pieces are still connected like that i've put a hole in the middle as well so i can put the piece of string over the top so you want to cut it out Hey, buddy. Yes. So, so we haven't used a, a great deal of the paper because we don't need to use that much. So I've got the snake's head. So I'm just going to put a little bit. If you're not very good with scissors, um, make sure you ask a grown-up to do this bit for you. Lasha, buddy, can you go back to daddy, please? So, oh, <laughs> make sure that you pick it up in such a way that you don't drop all of the pasta off the piece of string like I've just done. Okay, so <laughs> put it on this pipe cleaner as well. Um, so, as I said, the other thing you can use it for as well is um, you could use a pipe cleaner instead. So, what you want to do is once you've sorted out the head of the snake is you want to put it on and now that I've done that bit I'm going to put the pasta back on here as well this will be much quicker this time because it's it is easier to feed it onto the pipe cleaner than it is to feed it onto the string there we go and it's shorter as well right <laughs> Go. One more. Fantastic. So as I said as well, you can use beads or whatever you've got at home. You don't have to use pasta particularly. Um, pasta was all I had at home. I didn't have any um, anything else. So. so yeah, there we go. So what I'm going to do, the sellotape is just to sellotape the snake, the two parts of the snake's head together. Okay, so if I can find it. Okay. So. 
and you just want to sellotape the two bits together and so because I've got a pink pipe cleaner what I've done as well is I have left a little bit out of the front so that the snake has a little bit of a tongue that's sticking out by there as well so um, you can add you can use your crayons to color in the snake's head or if you're using plain paper or you can do what I've done with this penne pasta I've colored it in with my crayons um, be careful if you're using pens or that kind of thing because you don't want to get pen all over the table um, make sure that you've asked your, your grown-up as well to help you if you need help so you can add some eyes onto your snake as well or you can use so I found some beads somewhere that I was just going to use for the eyes but we'll leave those for now for this one so this is my snake so he's got all different colors on his body and he's also got a green head and a tongue as well okay so that is our craft for this week we hope you've really enjoyed today we hope you've enjoyed being with us for our story and for our craft and for our song and our game as well and i thought it'd be good just for us to bring the memory verse back up because the memory verse isn't on the craft this week just to yes. remind you of what that memory verse is that it is everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved romans chapter 10 verse 13 and it's a fantastic verse isn't it Beck? because yes. you know as it says everyone not just some people but everybody who calls on the name of the lord which is jesus that was one of the names of jesus actually. yes lord, oh, yeah. we'll come to that in a couple of weeks time yeah. we'll be saved but um, to remind you as well, um, we do have our sheet. So if you if you still want to join in with even more Big Fish Fun, then the sheets will be in the description below for our YouTube channel or they'll be on our Facebook page as well. Yes, yeah, so tomorrow morning I'll post up the link on our Facebook page. We apologise for those last week that couldn't get through. Hopefully last week's link has been fixed now, but I have checked this week's link, so it should be fine. Yes. It worked earlier on today. If it doesn't work tomorrow, let us know and we'll get it sorted as soon as we can. Yeah, of course. Um, we hope you enjoy that, as well as learning the memory verse off the sheet and from what you've just seen. Remember, Luke's memory verse recap video will go up on Monday. Yes. So, so far, he's been inside the belly of the whale and he's been at the empty tomb. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where he's going to end up to this week to remind you of the memory verse. Um, yes. And um, as well as that, just to remind you, on Sunday morning, we'll post up our story recap video. So that's a story you've seen today. Yeah. So you can watch it again, enjoy it again. But also, as well, some questions at the end. And some quite difficult questions this week. Okay. To make you just think about how amazing and incredible God is. So we hope you've enjoyed it. We hope yeah. you've had a great week. And we hope to see you next week as well. So, see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs>